all wait in the car to say 9.30. <laughs> and they all get in. in. Like uh, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Did you ever watch that movie? It's good. It's really Midnight good. What? In the Garden of Good and Evil. No, I've heard of it. It's a novel. And then Clint Eastwood is the director. morning. My name is Kathy Buras. I'm the worship team moderator. <clears throat> Welcome to worship here this morning. Uh, preaching for us today is Catherine Bates. She is a retired pastor who currently lives in North Kansas City. I will let you read more about her in the bulletin because I know you can do that. And um, we welcome all of you, uh, especially those who are visitors and those who are worshiping online. You are part of our family, and we are so glad to have you. Let us worship. That's a way to come into your church, right? Making a big noise. Anyway, thank you all for having me. Uh, I invite you to join me responsibly in our call to worship. We gather with people. Oh, please stand if you're able. We gather with people around the world to remember and celebrate God's love. All are welcomed into this house of blessing. We are lifted up and reminded who God calls us to be.
Let your children come. Come on up to the friends. It is time to have some children's time. You ready? Let's sit over here in the middle. I like it when the camera can see all the little heads that are coming up here. Hi. Come on up. Want to sit right here? Where'd you go? Go, go. Come on over. Come on over. We got room. We're still coming in. Yes. Oh, some are so little. Hi, friends. Miss Jill and I were just talking about teaching because we're teachers. Hi, you sitting up by me? It's comfy up here. I know. Hi. Um, yes. Hi. You should see the faces. I wish the camera was back here because it's just, they're so fun. All right. So last time you were with Miss Carrie, we talked about the hand for praying. The thumb was for praying for people closest to us, the pointer for the people who show us the way, the middle, the tall one for the people who lead us, the ring finger for the people who need us, and then the pinky for ourselves, and then we say amen. Today we're going to talk about the hand as a helper. How do you use your hands to help? Hmm, got an idea? Get us dressed. Yeah, it's really helpful when you get yourself dressed. It really is because, you know, moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas are tired and it's hard enough to get ourselves dressed, let alone other people. How else do we help? How do you help right now? You've been using your hands helping. Yeah, you help your brother sometimes. Sometimes you need to hold hands and say, nope, we're going this way. How else do you help? Help my mommy. What do you help your mom do? Help with my baby sister. Help with the baby sister. Are you on diaper duty? <laughs> Not duty diapers, but diaper duty. It's when you have a job to do with diapers. Do you help bring her the clothes? Do you help play with sister? Yeah, you play. How do little ones play? What do they do? They use their hands and their feet, kind of like little monkeys, right? Hands and feet. How do you help? Um, making my bed. Making my bed. I love that. So have you ever heard the word chores? Do you have chores at your house? Things you have to do. If, if it wasn't something you had to do, then they would, they would call it play. But it's chores because it's a have to. So making your bed is very helpful. What else? And I make my lunch. I love this. Do you ever use your hands to give something? To share. To share. I love that. I help your mommy and daddy. You help your mommy and daddy. Do you ever have too much in your house and you're like, we really have too much in the house and we need to get it out of the house? Do you think... Throw it in the trash. Yes. Yes. Sometimes it is trash and we need to throw it away. But sometimes this is not useful to me anymore. Donate. Donate. We give it away because we know that this is useful to someone. And someone needs this. And so we're going to find a place to take this thing. And then that thing will find another home that needs it. Right? So we are using our helping hands to help do the work, to help feel safe, to help guide, and to help give the world what it needs. Look at these hands. These are important. These do a lot of things. All right, so we are going to use our hands with our, our song to pray, and then we'll go to awakening. So the song that we're going to sing is this one. Jesus loves me. Ready? Here we go. Jesus loves me. He 
for coming up to see me. Amen. Let's go on out. Hi, friends. Look at all the helping hands. <laughs> Thank you. Aren't they cute? Isn't that fun? Children's times are always fun. You never know what they'll do either. I had one where I gave out sunflower seeds, when, talked about how sometimes some people are hard and crusty. Well, one little boy stuffed his pocket full of the sunflower seeds. And it, so it went in this pocket, and this pocket, this pocket, and this pocket, and this pocket. And his mom was crawling under the pew at that point. And then only to find out that he had a hole in his pocket and there was a trail wherever he went in the church. You knew exactly where he had been. So, there is so much confusion and, and um, things often seem out of control. And it's easy for us to complain, to grumble, to question, and even to doubt God's presence. Is God with us or not? Unbeknownst to us, God is listening, loving us, providing for all of our needs, even when it's not what we want. So let us come before God in prayer as we pray together, saying, Awesome God, your love extends beyond our boundaries. The world is filled with mystery that sometimes takes our breath away and sometimes fills us with doubts and questions. We confess that such mystery makes us uncomfortable, for we are not in control. Though we know that your ways are not our ways and that you are far wider and deeper than we can ever imagine, we still think we can do it on our own. Forgive us for trying to manage everything and for our impatience with the workings of your purposes. Give us a holy awe that is content to marvel and trust your unfolding grace. Breathe into us a deeper faith that radiates peace. Amen. Our prayers assist us in seeing what God sees, our needs, God provides in surprising ways, helping us to change and grow along the way. Through grace, God forgives and moves us into a much better future, offering us all that we need. Praise God and offering us that peace. May the peace of Christ be with you.
morning's scripture lesson comes from Exodus 17, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place of Massah and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Oh, yeah. 
and the reading from Matthew 21, verses 23 to 32. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? And Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, when, did, when then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not, but later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? And they said, the first. And Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Holy wisdom, holy words. Thanks be to God. So I'm going to read the lyrics of a, a song, and if you'll wait till I'm done, you can reveal your age by knowing the answer to it and sharing that with us, okay? So, memories light the corners of my mind, misty watercolor memories of the way we were, scattered pictures of the smiles we left behind, smiles we gave to one another for the way we w were. Can it be that? It is, can it be that it was all so simple then? Or has time rewritten every line? If we had the chance to do it all again, tell me, would we? Could we? Memories may, may be beautiful, and yet what's too painful to remember, we simply choose to forget. So it's the laughter we will remember, whenever we re will remember the way we were, the way we were. Any answers? Mahogany. Barbara Streisand, and the way we were in the movie. So, memories can be quite the blessing, and yet we often remember things quite differently than the way they happened. On a home visit many years ago, an elderly woman shared a childhood memory that she had of another elderly woman in her church who went blind and could no longer read her Bible. So this woman I visited was determined not to let that happen to her. She decided she would memorize her Bible. And so as I sat there, she then said, I didn't lose my uh, eyesight. I lost my memory. Our memories are very valuable. We often take pictures so that we can s see the fun things we did and look back to the past and finds some joy and happiness. The biblical story are memories that one generation passed on to another generation. And 
it's telling the stories over and over again to the next lineage about the obstacles that they had overcome, how they were delivered by God, and how God led them to a new time, place, and way of being. Such explains why we some... <laughs> Thank you. It explains why so much genealogy um, that we sometimes go, really, do I have to read through all those names all over again when we get to the Bible, especially in the Old Testament? And it also tells why there's, uh, sometimes there's repetition. What, what, didn't I just read that story? Well, as it goes down to different generations, it kind of gets like the, you know, remember that um, where you whisper in one person and it goes down the line? The, the telephone, thank you. See, my memory's going too. <laughs> but it goes down the line, and so there's some variations that happen. Um, sometimes it's because people misspeak, or they misunderstand, or they leave out a part. Or maybe they just forget. Our Old Testament reading from last week and this week share the story of the Hebrew people wandering through the wilderness after being delivered from Egyptian slave, slavery, arriving now to a time of grumbling and complaining. I remember one um, time uh, as I was going to my uncle's house with my son in the back seat. And my son didn't really want to go. And so he was complaining. And I turned to him and said, okay, after a while I said, are you done complaining yet? And he said, no, sometimes I like to complain. And I had dawned on me, don't we all? They were hungry. Of course they were complaining. God responds, sending quail and manna raining down upon them. Manna meaning, what is this? Because they didn't know. Never seen it. Today's passage continues the complaints. We go from hearing, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. To now hearing in this week's passage, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? They have selective memory. Some people do. Remembering the good of the past and forgetting how awful slavery had been how many had died from the abuse and oppression that they experienced. Selective memory has been with humanity from the beginning of time and is alive and well even today. We still have people in many churches going, in the good old days, remembering how it used to be, when maybe it wasn't quite that good as we sometimes portray it. So fast forward ahead to our gospel reading, which follows Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem and is overturning the tables in the temple, cleansing it of the corruption, or trying to. Wouldn't it be nice if Jesus could um, eliminate some of the corruption we see today in different places? The religious leaders had become agents of the Roman Empire rather than representing God and God's people. Jesus is teaching in the temple when most, the most powerful religious leaders interrupt in order to confront him. He, they've heard of what he's been saying out as he's been preaching around the country about what he thinks of the Pharisees and the religious leaders, the Sadducees and all the others. They've heard it. And then he's come into their temple, their turf. He's overturned their tables 
of business. And now he's teaching in their temple. Who does he think he is anyway? The intent for, in this whole series of different um, confrontations that Jesus has with opposition is to undermine his authority and his power so that people wouldn't pay attention to him anymore. If they had succeeded, crucifying him would not be necessary. They ask a zero-sum question with the winner taking all and the loser having nothing. They ask where on earth he obtained his authority. He didn't have the credentials or the pedigree that they had. After all, they had inherited their positions. It was passed down from their fathers. They hadn't done anything to earn it, but they neglect to see that. It's the privilege looking down, trying to take him down with intimidation and humiliation. Jesus stands up to them, turning the tables, responding to their question with a question of his own. He will answer their question if they can answer his question. It's similar to the question in which um, the answer creates problems for them. As far as where did John the Baptist really get his authority to be baptizing people? If John had received his authority from God, that makes John more powerful than they are. John was popular, so they didn't want to anger their followers by discounting him either. So they say they don't know. The question goes to the nature and source of authority. Is authority intended to bully and intimidate others or to lift others up? If, a, if authority source is man-made, those in power will try to dominate and suppress others. We see it all the time. We tend to take positions offering positions that offer authority and we know from statistics that often the people in the highest levels of, of authority are often the cruelest. They are often abusers. They want to dominate. And we see these religious leaders who have forgotten the true source of all authority. I was ordained in the United Methodist Church, and that, back then you were ordained twice because, well, you've got to make sure it takes, I guess. But actually it was because we were supposed to serve two years before we were full members of the um, United Methodist uh, as clergy. But I remember their laying hands on me and saying, Receive the authority placed in you. And that was a foreign concept for a woman back in the 70s. Living in a hierarchical system where women didn't have any authority or power to speak of. Over the years, I have learned that authority is like respect. It comes from how we treat others the source and guiding light to how we use any authority can only come from God. And if we take that for granted, like respect, we can lose it. It's earned. When we think of respect, it's similar. So much of what ails our world today is how People are abusing, oppressing, and suppressing others, forgetting that all of us are God's children, dearly beloved by God. God's de desire 
is for us to follow the life and teachings of Jesus, having love and compassion for all of God's other's children, standing up to the bullies, or calling them out at least, teaching others another way, and lifting up the most vulnerable. We are called to remember that God is the source of everything, even or perhaps especially when it comes to authority. Receive the authority that God has placed in each and every one of you, lifting up God's people wherever you see them, especially God's most vulnerable people, remembering God's love and grace and sharing it with all those you encounter. Amen. Thank you, Catherine. This morning is World Communion. On this day, Every year, we celebrate communion along with churches throughout the world in every, dom well, maybe not every, most denominations. We celebrate communion together as a global church here in Kansas City, here in the United States, and in every country. But in a lot of those countries, there is not peace. Here, there is not peace. We have violence, more violence than we've had in a long time, and we are not comfortable with it. So today on World Communion Sunday, we also take what used to be called the peacemaking offering, and it is now called the peace and global witness offering. This offering is used locally and across the world by the global Presbyterian Church to work for reconciliation and peace. Now... If you're like me, I feel like I can't really make an impact on wars in Sudan or drug conflicts in South America and Central America. That is way too much out of my control. But one thing I have learned in my work at Catholic Charities is that small amounts do make a difference. They add up really fast. You would be so surprised. So. If you have your offering with you from the envelope that came in your packet, that's great. Use that. If not, you can take this envelope and write peace, peacemaking, peace and justice, any of those things on it. We will go to the Peace and Global Witness Offering. The Peace and Global Witness Offering encourages the church to cast off anxiety and fear and discord and division and embrace God's mission of reconciliation to those around the corner and around the world. We can make a difference in the world if we work together. So when the offering plates are passed here in a moment, please put your offering in or go home and get your envelope and put it in. Even a small amount makes a difference. And now we have a, a message, that's the word, message about the Duchesne Clinic while we gather our offering. Good morning. My name is Dr. Desi Baptiste. I am the medical director at Duchenne's Clinic in Kansas City, Kansas. Thank you for inviting me to speak to you directly. This is a very beautiful church, and this really reflects the body of Christ. Duchenne Clinic is a free clinic that offers a variety of healthcare services to approximately um, 2,500 patients every year. We offer a variety of health care services from acute or to chronic care. We also supply a variety of specialty services. We offer gynecology care, nephrology, ENT, chiropractor, diabetes education, and behavioral health counseling. And all these services are free of charge. So we are not only supplying medical care, but we also supply life-saving medication to our patients to patient assistance programs. 
There are people who have health insurance and their health insurance would not pay for life-saving medication. But through this type of program, we were able to give them free for our patients. And all our patients do not have insurance. They all are very uninsured. These programs actually provide the most expensive medication for uh, patients who have three to four autoimmune disorders, cancers, who have uncontrolled diabetes, hypertension. Actually, we don't have um, a pharmacy yet, but we do have a full-time pharmacist and a medication room where we store all our medications. Some of them we buy through private grants and other forms of the nations. Every month, we dispense around 500 to 600 medication samples and medical supplies to our patients for free. Duchenne Clinic partners with Wydro Care, a community partnership to improve access to specialty health care for low-income and uninsured residents of Wyandotte and Johnson counties. The services such as MRI, CT scan, colonoscopy, and surgery, and referral to cardiology, neurology, and rheumatology. Duchenne Clinic has been serving the uninsured residents of Wyandotte for almost 35 years, and we, are, we plan to continue to do so for the next 50 years or more. Together, we must act diligently to engage and serve the poor, the vulnerable, the oppressed, as Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, calls each of us to bring hope and new op opportunities and possibilities for those who need it the most. Thank you for your willingness to act boldly to support the mission of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And this is really the, the, the house of the Lord, and all the glory shall be given to him. Thank you. As forgiven and redeemed people of God, we are invited to the table of grace. Come to the joyful feast. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Source of all life, we thank you that we can gather with all of your children throughout the world to remember and celebrate the deliverance you have offered, freeing us as you freed the Hebrew people. And then from sin, through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We thank you for the teachings of Jesus, which continues to guide us. We need the compassion, the love that Jesus revealed to be possible. Thank you for your Holy Spirit, which continues to remind us of your call to all of us. to be the people that you wanted us to be. Nourish us as we partake from this banquet so that we may be the body of Christ, quenching the thirst of salvation in our communities. Fill us to overflowing with your love and grace this day so that we can be prepared for your hev heavenly banquet in the future. We ask that you be present, Lord, with the, all of those who are in need, those who are struggling from with strike finances, or with um, anxiety, with, a, with illness, with oppression, with disease, with seeing their lands destroyed and not knowing where to go, being displaced. Help us to be instruments of your will, O oh God. 
and help us to reach out to others with your love. Help us now as a community of faith to pray as you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he gathered his, his clueless disciples together, and he had a feast with them. And during that feast, he broke the bread, reminding them of the Passover, saying, take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, this is the cup of salvation, offered for you and for many, for the redemption of sin. Take, drink, in remembrance of me, so in remembrance of Christ, we gather, remembering both the Passover of God's deliverance then and God's deliverance with, through Jesus Christ from our sins. This time we will be passing out the different elements, remembering him. And we will hold on to it and, and take it all to, um, at the same time. These are the gifts of God given for each of us.
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for us, reminding us of the Passover and the manna that God has offered throughout time, and that we are to be the body of Christ. Take, eat, and remember of him. gift of salvation poured out for us and for all others. Take, drink, in remembrance of him. Let us begin an attitude of prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. You have fed us with the bread of life quenched our thirst with more than living water, and renewed us for your service. We give ourselves to you and ask that our daily living may be part of the life of your kingdom. May our love reflect your love, reaching out to others through Jesus Christ our Lord. Patrick's out of town, so call Gay Lee. (laughs) 
Kaylee's out of town. Call Mickey. She, maybe she's out of town. I don't know. Well, after being called out, thanks. Thanks, Kathy. <laughs> what exactly is a bridge pastor? You know, you, we've heard that expression thrown around. And what's going on with the interim pastor search? And how does it fit with our mission statement? And how do we compare to other churches? These and other questions can be answered by Melanie Townsend and Kevin Mason and Terry Monrad uh, in the choir room after the service. So show up for Sunday school if you have any questions about what's going on. Thanks. to be a blessing. So go, we invite you to go forth sharing the love and grace of God with all those you encounter. May the blessings of God be with you, filling you to overflowing. May God's grace be overflowing, leading you on with the light of God to be a beacon of light to others. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, go forth. Amen. Mm -hmm.